a while ago, I put up an uh, open question on Instagram, and that got me thinking about live stream topics, and that got me thinking about what I should live stream, and that got me thinking about occult media. So I'm going to run down some occult media because I've been thinking about it a little bit, and this is going to be mostly movies, mostly games, um, because I quite enjoy games and I quite enjoy movies. I don't read too many books because... I'm an occultist. If I'm going to read a book, I'm going to read an occult book. I'm not going to read an occult fiction book. Most of the time, there is at least one occult fiction book on this list. It's also important to know that I'm putting these up on the list because I think that they also highlight a very, very strong portion of something in the occult, which I will explain. This will be spoiler free, but I'm going to mostly just go head on into it. And there's also not going to be anything like, you're just going to get pure occultly inspired media. You're not going to get like Yu-Gi-Oh! just because there is an entire archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh! for the Olympic Planetaries and for Aleister Crowley. You're not going to get that. Just because I might do a live stream where I stream Yu-Gi-Oh! and talk about occultism does not mean that Yu-Gi-Oh! is an occult game, even though it is quite good. But without further ado, let's get into the list. The Ninth Gate, directed by Roman Polanski and starring Johnny Depp. The Ninth Gate is a wonderful movie about occult booksellers, and that might sound very boring. However, it is a wonderful movie that highlights how fucking obsessive the occult community is about our books. We are incredibly, incredibly obsessed with the authenticity of occult works and the occult history of things, and this movie covers that perfectly. There is nothing better to cover, like, if you want to learn about occult blinds, watch this movie to the end. It is beautiful. A Blind for Anyone Who Doesn't Know is a piece of information put into an occult book that is to purposefully mislead and deceive readers who don't know that it's actually false. The PGM has a lot of these in the form of joke rituals. Agrippa has some in his on accident, I would assume. And this movie shows and highlights what those are perfectly. It also shows synchronicities very well. It's just a very, very good movie. I recommend you check it out if you haven't already. A Dark Song. A Dark Song is one of those kind of movies that I love and hate for different reasons. I love this movie because it is really good in that it really does detail how ritual magic kind of functions and looks to an outside audience, but it also pisses me off because this is definitely not the Aubrey Melon. At the one point you have the, like, they do not do the Abramelin as the Abramelin is written. This is much more of like, if I want to be charitable, a thelemic corruption of the Abramelin at best, and artistic license taken to the extreme at worst. The premise of the movie is that it is about a man and this woman who is commissioning him, and they try to do the Abramelin so that she can get her holy guardian angel to bring back her son. Shenanigans ensue, some nonsense happens, the ritual is very much not the Abramelin, and she is basically abused for several months by this man. It is a very good movie. It's a terrible impression of the Abramelin, but it's a great movie in that, like, it really looks like what ceremonial magic looks like to the outside viewer looking in. So if you can really get over the fact that it is most certainly not the Abramelin, if you can get over that fact and just look at it for it is a movie about occultism and how occultism looks to non-occultists. Because as an occultist, watching this movie for the first time, we're, I was watching this, uh, like I had a watch party with a couple of friends of mine who are all also occultists, and we were laughing our asses off at some of the parts in this movie because at one point... They just draw Ray Key symbols and Chinese letters, and there is no Ray Key in Chinese in the Abra Melon. Despite all of that, I highly recommend this, because it's a very, it's a good movie regardless. The Vavitch. Oh, I'm sorry, that says The Witch. My bad. 
Directed by Robert Eggers, a man who is an absolute mad lad and probably the second coming of Stanley Kubrick, this is his directorial debut. This is a period piece about a Puritan family slowly but surely going insane because they think somebody is a witch, one of their family members is a witch. And I will not spoil anything else. It is very old timey. It is very period piece E. I highly recommend it though. The Holy Mountain. If you want a movie that shows how fucking weird occultism is when you are in the middle of some metaphysical bullshit, this is the movie for you. This is the movie that will make you realize that occultism is weird. And watching this movie before you have a deep knowledge of the occult and after you have a deep knowledge of the occult is the most surreal experience I've ever fucking had. Because I watched this movie when I was like starting out in occultism and not really know what I di was doing. And I watched it semi-recently and I'm like, oh god, I understand the movie now. And it was a weird experience. Highly recommend. That is it for the movies on this list. That being said, there's more than just movies in the world. So let's talk about some things that are not movies. This is a book series recommendation. It is the Dark School series by Maddie Silver. I actually have a video covering the first book. It's a more full review and about what I like about it. That being said, that was a sponsored video. I did get these books for free as I was sent them by the author. So full disclosure on that. That being said, these books are genuinely pretty good. They're at least interesting enough to where I do genuinely recommend them. At some point I will have a full like series review, hopefully, at some point. Short summary of uh, the first two books in the series. Book one, Path of the Neophyte. You are pulled into the astral plane and you have to interact with spirits. And it really highlights how fucking weird spirits can be. It's really good. Full video in the description. The second book is Path of the Adept, which I do not have a full review on. This pivots much more towards urban fantasy and the basic premise is that spirits are now much more prevalent in the physical world. Like, they, they're much more present and they're a regular everyday thing. Link to my review and the both books will be in the description down below. I'm not getting paid for this one. Just a heads up. I just really enjoy, like, good, well-researched occult fiction, which is what this entire video is about. Well-researched occult fiction. That being said... Now we get into a type of media that I have been a fan of since I was a literal child. Video games. I've been playing video games since I was a wee lad. As such, I have some opinions on them, so let's talk about that. And I have two video games here that I think really, really do a good job of being occultically inspired. So let's talk about them. Cultist Simulator. Couldn't help but typecast myself here. So... Cultist Simulator is one of the most well-researched pieces of video games I've ever seen in my entire life. There are references and bits of info straight out of modern grimoires. I believe Jake Stratton Kent's books are mentioned at one point, or at least the things in Jake Stratton Kent's books are mentioned. That is why, despite how memey it is, Cultist Simulator is on the well-researched occult media list. So, time for the final entry on this list, and this is uh, going to be a weird one. Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. Honestly, you could put most of the Shin Megami Tensei games on this list. That being said, Nocturne is my favorite, so that's why this is on the list. The premise of this is the world has ended and you are basically playing adult Pokemon using Demons of the Guaisha and mythological creatures in order to rebuild the world. Major characters include Thor, Lucifer, yes, that Lucifer. Loki is sitting at a bar run by Nyx, or at least artistic depictions of all of these characters. And it goes into how should we build the world in a very Gnostic Demiurge style. Now that being said, is this the most well-researched for good reasons? No, Cultist Simulator and the Dark School series are way better researched. Is this one of my favorite RPGs? Yes. That being said, this has been my list of what are my favorite occult media. 
I have been Dave the Amateur Magus. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support me, feel free to share this video. And if you really like what I do here and you want to see me continue and make more wonderful content and you want exclusives, Patreon link is down in the description down below. If you're watching this on Patreon, thank you uh, as always. And if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to subscribe. We got a lot of new content. New content is weekly. Once again, I have been Dave the Amateur Magus. Hope you're having a good day. If you're not having a good day, hope your day gets better. Take it easy.